In this section, we're going to walk through the update process that we described at the end of the last section. So here's what we need to do. We're going to first tag our image with a distinct version number, and then we're going to push that new version up to Docker Hub. After that, we're going to run a rather long kubectl command that's going to forcibly update our deployment and tell it to use this new version of the image that we have pushed off to Docker Hub. So let's get to it. Step number one is going to be to tag our image. So to get started, I'm going to open up my terminal, and I'm going to create a second terminal window, and then change on over to that complex client directory. So I'll go into complex, and I'll change into the client folder. So here's my client project. We have already built an image out of this folder, and we have not made any changes to our project since then. So we could technically do a Docker tag here and tag the existing image that we already built. But instead, just to show you the entire flow, I'm going to build the entire image from scratch again. So I'll run Docker build, and I'll tag this thing with my Docker ID slash multi-client. And I'll make sure I get a colon on there. And then we have to put some unique token on the other side of the colon. And so for me, as a version number, I'll just do like, I don't know, version five or something, anything you want to do. And then after that, I'll put down a period to specify the build context. Okay, so I'll run that command. The image is rebuilt and it's now tagged with your Docker ID slash multi-client colon V5. So now we need to make sure that we push this updated image over to Docker Hub. So I'll copy the entire tag right there and I'll do a Docker push and copy the tag in. All right, so just like that, we now have a new tagged image over on Docker Hub. So now we need to run a kubectl command that's going to force our deployment to use that new image version. Back inside my terminal, I'm going to delete the second terminal window that I opened, and so I'm left just with the original window that is based on the simple k8s directory. So inside of here, we're going to run a rather long command. I've got a quick diagram to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be writing out. All right, so here it is. Yes, it's rather long. So we're going to use kubectl, and we're going to use the set command. We use the set command to update a property on one of our objects that exist inside of our cluster. The specific property that you and I want to update is the image property. So the image property that is tied to our single container right here. After that, we'll specify the type of the object that we want to update. So in our case, we are not updating a container. We're not updating a pod. We are updating a deployment. That's what we're updating. So we're going to specify a deployment slash the name of our deployment, which for you and me is client-deployment right there. After that, we'll then specify the container name. So remember, a, con a deployment creates pods, and inside of a pod, we can have many different containers. Our specific pod template right here only has one container, but we could very easily have other containers inside of here as well. And all those other containers would have their own image property. So we need to make sure that we specify which of all of our containers we want to update. And we specify the container that we want to update by specifying the name. So we're going to say the container name, and for us, the container name is client. We'll then do an equal sign and then the full image that we want to use. So it'll be your Docker ID slash multi-client and then a colon and then the version number that you use to tag the image with. So that's the entire command. Let's give it a shot. Back inside my terminal, I'm going to run kubectl set image. Then we're going to do our object type, which is a deployment slash the object name which is client-deployment. Then we'll put in a space. So there is a space there. Notice how it wrapped the line for me, but there definitely without a doubt is a space there. And I'll specify the container that I care about, which is client. And then the update that we're going to make is to say that we now want to use our Docker ID slash multi-client. And then the version we want to use is whatever version you just used a second ago when we rebuilt our image. And so for me, it is v5. All right, so that's it. So we're going to run this command. And we get that our image has been updated. So now we can do a kubectl get pods. 
And you'll notice how we have a single pod here. And most importantly, it has an age of around five, six, seven, or however many seconds, which definitely means without a doubt that our pod was just recreated by our deployment. So now we get to test this out inside of our browser to make sure that the update actually went live. So remember to access our running container, we need our Minikube IP. So there's the IP address. And then remember the port for our application or for this particular pod is 31515 as specified inside of our client node port service file. So inside my browser, I'll open up a new tab. I'll put in my IP address and I'll go to 31515. And then once here, I should see Fib Calculator version 2. Now really quick, if you don't see version 2, do not panic. The React application we put together has some caching built into it. So if you do not see version 2 over here, then the first thing I want you to do is give it a couple seconds and then do a quick refresh. Failing that, try opening up your Chrome console. Expand this tab on network right here. You can select disable cache and then try refreshing again. And then if even that doesn't work, you can always run the set, where's that command? The big set image command here again. Try running that a second time. And then after all that, you should be able to eventually refresh this thing and see version two appear. Like I said, sometimes it does take a second or two for it to actually pop up the update inside of here, but you should eventually see it go live. All right, so that's it. That's how we update or how we tell a deployment that we want it to use the newer version of an image. Now, I think you'll agree with me that this entire process is definitely a little bit of a pain because we have to rebuild the image, we have to apply a unique tag version on it, and then we have to run that command. But when we eventually set up our entire cluster to be deployed off to either Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud, you and I are going to write together, are going to write out a big long script to facilitate our deployment. And inside that script, we're going to put all of this tagging logic and all the version tagging and all the kubectl set image command stuff as well. And so when we eventually move over to a production environment, all this versioning stuff is going to be completely automated for us and we're not going to have to do any additional work. So it's really just kind of understanding what's going on behind the scenes. That's the challenging part. Once you understand what's happening from then on out, life gets pretty darn easy. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's take a pause right here and we'll continue in the next section.